let's go. Yeah. So welcome to the next episode of uh, the Post North Pod. Today we have Bogat Stubert with us. So uh, Bogat, please tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, hi, I'm Burkhardt from Southern Bavaria. So I'm a freelancer and have been for the last seven and a half years now building Qt embedded systems like driver terminals for sugar beet harvesters, forage harvesters, uh, two infotainment systems, um, metal sheet bending machines, so doing metal sheet origami, cool stuff. I had, could refresh my uh, my trigonometry and geometry expertise a bit, and now doing a medical cleaning robot. Cool. So, so lots of devices and, and lots you of wrote, devices. Yes, and, and you've done an an interesting talk, uh, which we will link to about LGPL and devices, uh, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's one. Uh, well, I got into the the licensing things because of doing uh, well um, Linux systems, building Linux systems with LGPL, with Qt under LGPL, and of course, uh, about 100 other different uh, FOSS licenses, which you have to check as well. So I've done a couple of checks by now for four or five customers by now. So uh, checking the compliance of a complete Linux system built with uh, built with Yocto. Yep. Yeah, I guess that's looking at your newsletter and so on. Uh -huh. I guess that's your, your play field. So Yocto embedded Qt embedded Linux and Yeah, Android that's device. it. So no, no desktop. So uh, that doesn't mean that I uh, I don't uh, use QWidget. So my last project was actually with QWidget on uh, on an embedded system. But yeah, so it uh, had to do some hard thinking um, 12 years back. That was my last desktop application I did. <laughs> yeah. And it yeah, was a bit, uh, obviously, my work at Nokia, so where I was in business development at, at Nokia Qt, business development for uh, the uh, LGPL Qt part, so convincing uh, companies to use Qt on the LGPL. So yeah, I guess that, that's that's what got me started in, right. in, in that. And I mean, it, it, that's also a bit of background to why why Qt is LGPL. So I mean, it, it used to be QPL and all of that before, but then they transitioned into GPL yeah. and and do a licensing model. And then Nokia acquired them, which meant that the actual business was selling hardware, which mm -hmm. meant that they went LGPL to basically increase the number of developers and make it more available. Um, and and now we're sort of seeing a well, I I don't know how to put it, but a, a sort of going back towards GPL in some modules. Um, yeah, and also especially new to, modules, especially so. Yeah, and also transitioning towards uh, LGPL three, um, yeah. which I find clearer in in many respects, but it does have some clauses that that affects device manufacturers in in what. What you have to do, especially towards consumers, mm -hmm. which sets the fields for for an interesting question. So, 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 so one of the things that you mentioned is that the difference between consumers to business or business to business and business to consumer, and and how that plays with the with the LGPL. Perhaps that's yeah, that's one of the. Uh, I think that's uh, the one of the first questions you you should answer when you think about. Uh, which license to use, Qt Commercial, Qt LGPL, and if you are inclined to use Qt LGPL, then look at the difference uh, for, for consumer products or business products. And the thing is, if it's a, a business product, you do not have to provide the installation information. That means, in, uh, essentially, you do not have to make your device updatable. So uh, uh, with LGPL, normally um, it says, well, you have to allow uh, your users to modify the Qt library and then to install this modified Qt library on the device. Uh, that's for consumer products only. 
but not for bis, uh, B2B products, not for business products. And that's, yeah. uh, that's important to know. And so I'm, I'm, most of the time I'm working with uh, businesses, so building B2B uh, products. So for them, uh, then it's, it's easy. The decision uh, uh, is, is a lot easier because, well, no, no force to update your device. And uh, yeah, so maybe some uh, can give you some examples. What would be a typical uh, such device? Is it a yeah. harvester? Yeah, harvester, of course, uh, is a typical business device, tractors, trucks, professional uh, appliances. So uh, say a professional coffee machine or a professional washing machine, dishwasher, wash as you find them in restaurants or uh, washing machine, professional washing machines you would find in uh, hospitals, for example. Um, so these are business devices or medical devices most of the time if they are used in, uh, in a hospital. That's a, that's a commercial product. Uh, Heavy-duty cam cameras, as you know them from trucks or harvesters. And there were some, uh, well, uh, if you then go to home appliances, say the washing machine, which is in your, uh, in your kitchen, uh, uh, or well, uh, probably not in the kitchen, more in the bathroom or so. Or I think the, it is uh, in the kitchen the in, in England but, or in UK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I live there too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the home appliances are uh, consumer products. So, and you have to be uh, pretty careful uh, to make this distinction. It, it's getting interesting with medical devices if you have a, di a dialysis uh, device well you would first think no normally people go into a hospital to get the dialysis but there are also uh, devices that can be used at home mobile devices so and then it's uh, then it's getting gray um, you could, if you rent it out from the hospital or so, if, if it's on loan, then it uh, would be a commercial device still. But as soon as this device uh, is your, your own device, which you use regularly in, in your household, maybe uh, a button uh, or a smartwatch which says, oh, uh, the, the old person has fallen down, so we should, should check up on, uh, on him or her. Uh, that then is a personal device. Yeah, um, I, I think the wording is, I, I've only studied the wording in detail into GPL V3, but I think it's identical between LGPL and GPL. Yeah. Um, um, and I think it says that as soon as you enter the gray zone, it is a personal device. If there's it, any question, you should always sort of lean in that direction. Yeah. Um, but another interesting aspect, that, so even if you have to let the user have the installation instructions, it doesn't say that you need to to do that and preserve like all services and all warranties and all of that. So, no, so if, if you have something, but, but, but it does say it should be executable. Yes, but if, yes. Let, let, I mean, this is called TiVoization because of TiVo, and and I guess TiVo had the lockdown because they had DRM requirements to towards the the media vendors, mm -hmm. and they. They are fully obliged to detect that it's a modified version of the library and simply say that we will not connect to these services anymore uh, because we don't have full control of the DRM thing. But yeah. because I, what the GPL wants to do is to avoid you from sort of bricking the device for the consumer. So if you bought a piece of hardware, you should always be able to use that piece of hardware. It's exactly. And you can actually, it's perfectly legal and it's, it's explicitly written in the uh, GPL and hence in the LGPL uh, that you can void the warranty. So that's yep. perfectly okay. Uh, that's a thing uh, which um, companies and people often overlook, even the cute company uh, <laughs> tends to overlook that for obvious reasons. And uh, so you can void the warranty or you could even uh, for a car, for example, you could even uh, void uh, the uh, permission to operate the car on the road. So you could go even that far. Yeah. So you can, you, you can uh, do a lot there. 
And that's all perfectly legal. It doesn't have to work anymore. And if the, say, if the modified Qt library uh, changes the interfaces and uh, and then it crashes with the application which is on the device, that is all perfectly okay. So... So basically, all guarantees that you make for your software stack can be void and null. Yeah. But you have to allow the user to actually do that. Yeah. Uh, unless you're selling business to business, then you don't have to provide. Then that. you don't so have to provide it. You shouldn't. Uh, you, you mustn't actively uh, prevent the u- user from uh, from installing a modified library on your device. Um, that is wouldn't be allowed. But you don't. You just don't provide the the information. If a user is clever enough to work it out, fine. Um, but you shouldn't uh, prohibit users from doing so. Yeah. yeah. And with updates, you have a lot of uh, uh, possibilities to to make an update in a more controlled way. So you can. Um, you can do things like uh, users have to up, uh, upload their modified Qt version to uh, a server hosted by the uh, manufacturer. And then they can do some checks like you, you know it from the App Store, whether there is some malware or so in it. And only then the user can download that modified library from uh, from the server onto the device. So that's perfectly legal. You can sign your uh, uh, your libraries, um, and if it's not signed with an official key, then you know, okay, it's a modified one. And then you can, well, you can show oh, all in red. So uh, every ba- uh, background of a screen in red. So you, you can do these things. That's all perfectly okay. You can even charge for updates. So you can actually, if if that's the normal way, say say with, uh, with harvesters or tractors, it's normal that you do an update via can. Takes, takes ages, but... Then you have to buy the the CAN cables, adapters to uh, USB to CAN adapters, and so on. That amount, well, you'll pay something like two thousand euros, and but that's perfectly okay. If this is the normal way uh, the company does the update, uh, then you can charge for it. Yep. So, uh, with your experience here, what does your customer say about GPL three and LUPL three? Well, it started it started rough as usual. So <laughs> I, I I I did the project uh, with uh, the time of Q five six. That must have been twenty sixteen, something like that. And an infotainment system and the, the tier, tier one supplier said, no way we use LGPL version three. No way. So, okay, fine. Uh, you will change your mind. I, I still remember uh, that uh, people, uh, some tier one suppliers eight years ago just said, no way we will use LGPL version two. By now, I think everyone uh, is happy to use uh, LGPL software. So it's it's a matter of the costs and getting acquainted to it. So yeah, and by now, um, the the biggest obstacle for for companies is is really the uh, TVization clause, so the update. And I had one one uh, or two home appliance makers so one i can i can tell the name that's electrolux uh they went down the lgpl road and they are happily using it they have no problems providing the updates um i don't know how they do that uh i've never researched that uh but they are happy with that and they talked about it on some cute day in Italy and then there is another um uh, direct competitor of Electrolux and they couldn't get their head around uh, this update uh clause and even well i think they, they never really wanted to to think about how they can update uh their home appliances and it's just not really knowing what is involved. You can make it very safe, like an app store or so. You can void the warranty and so on. 
and they know how to void the warranty. If you scratch a screw on on a home appliance, warranty is voided. So we we all know that. And it's yeah. So uh, that that is the that is the clause which uh, which causes the most most head scratching. And they they paid in the end. They they pay millions of of license fees uh, to to the big company. F fine with me. <laughs> I must ask, well, uh, Electrolux is, is doing like whiteware, uh, yeah. fridges. What does an update of my fridge give me? Oh, <laughs> I don't know your fridge, but uh, I, know, <laughs> no. I know mine. And I think that there's, anyway, there's only a microcontroller in, inside, yeah. there, if, if at all. Yeah, it has some LCD display, and that's it. And I like my fridge's dump. <laughs> because it <they> can't <laughs> break, so uh, nothing but think of the smart fridges where you really have a display in uh, in, uh, in in the front panel, and you can you have uh, all kinds of apps. If you look at the Samsung or LG fridges, so the the Asian manufacturers are are much more happy to uh, provide basically a phone uh, or a tablet integrated into your fridge or oven or whatever. So they love that. Mm -hmm. But for me, I don't know. So I, I, have, uh, I have a washing machine with a rotary knob. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't even have a display. Good. Uh, the, <laughs> the fridge tells me the temperature. Is it good because you don't have to display the cube license? No. Uh, it, it, uh, well, in that case, you 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 don't have to display it if there's no uh, no exactly ability to do so. You don't have to. It's only if you if you have a user interface where you can display license text, then you have to do that in a fairly prominent uh, place. Um, yeah, but but I can imagine that if you have like a fridge and an oven and, and tons of other stuff, perhaps they can communicate between each other and, and do some magical stuff. Yeah, that's where I think uh, th that would be a good, a good uh, a use case. So uh, let them communicate via uh, Bluetooth or so with your smartphone and then have the uh, uh, some interesting applications on your smartphone like uh, stopping your uh, your oven now because you know you, you you could see into the oven from your smartphone because there's a camera inside there. Oh yeah, my my chicken is now well fried, so it looks yeah. a bit black already. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so you can do things like that if that is your 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 cup of tea. But you can always connect it to the fire alarm. I mean that's <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> But still, you wouldn't need, uh, you don't need a fancy or, or rich HMI for that. So it's, uh, um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't, uh, to be honest, I don't understand it on, uh, on, on uh, home appliances. So maybe on an oven or, or on, a, on a cooktop, maybe, if you can somehow control your recipes with that. Uh, yes, that can make sense. But what we have at the moment is, is nah, it's not too good. Well, I can imagine it's like the uh, vacuum cleaner notices that your bag is getting kind of full. These kind of information might be good, uh, but typically you you smell it before you you get a notice. <laughs> I imagine probably. <laughs> uh, I'm curious. The you mentioned in in your talk. Uh, in Italy uh, during the QT days um, how, about, about modifications. So how do you manage modifications you do to your to QT code? Um, so normally if, if, I, if it's a consumer device and I have to provide the installation information, I would provide uh, my whole Yocto build environment. So and I don't uh, I don't differentiate between packages which are on the LGPL and which are on the BSD or MID MIT not M <laughs> MIT license. Uh, it's all the same. So LGPL is pro uh, version three is probably the uh, the license with the most uh, um, conditions terms and if uh, well. 
typically all the others uh, will uh, be satisfied if if you satisfy LGPL license. So I, I would just pack together the complete uh, Yocto build environment with all the uh, sources downloaded and uh, off you go. So that means with Qt it would be typically patches. So mm -hmm. uh, patches in the uh, played in by the Yocto recipes. So BB append basically. BB append exactly, and with a patch in a subdirectory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's the simplest thing. So uh, handle everything the same, and yeah. uh, don't uh, well, don't do things differently for uh, each different license. That's that's uh, overkill. Yeah, and then you also fulfill the, the, I mean, you need to provide the, the source code even though the, the upstream goes down and all of that. Then you have a trouble that yeah. that gives yeah. you the, the rebuildability and the, all the source code archives. That sort you of could actually do everything uh, offline without an internet connection. And uh, yeah, that's possible. But you do not even have to go that far. So it's, it's still okay if it, it downloads things from... Uh, uh, from the internet and well with Qt uh, your modifications that some patches and uh, they come from your server also that's that's the easiest thing so I think uh, stay pragmatic uh, do it with le with least effort yeah <laughs> And you so, uh, somehow and, and be be nice to the user who wants to uh, uh, build a cute library and uh, get it on on the system. Why not? Just... I mean, it's probably not a majority of your customers, so it's uh, uh, it, it's probably not a big hassle. No, I I, I did that for one of the harvesters, uh, but in the end, I found out. Uh, from Miriam Ballhausen, the lawyer, that it's not necessary to provide the uh, my Yocto build environment. So in the end, we didn't do that. But no, if user device, uh, consumer devices are rare for me. In your talk, the same talk, we're, we're linking that, by the way, uh, dear yeah. listeners. <laughs> so. <laughs> You, you mentioned, let me see, I have a note here, uh, that uh, you mentioned an example where you could wrap the Qt keyboard and yeah. then you, you have to publish uh, that wrapper. So yeah. can, can you explain uh, what you mean with you have to make public? Yeah, sure I can. So uh, Qt Virtual Keyboard comes on the Qt Commercial License or, or GPL version 3. So, so not it's not LGPL, under LGPL. GPL. Yeah. Exactly. That's the tricky thing. And because everyone needs a keyboard or nearly everyone needs a keyboard these days and uh, an internationalized uh, uh, with, what, 50 different languages, um, yeah, that's a good argument uh, to force people to buy a cute license. So... Uh, the way you can work around that is uh, you put the virtual keyboard into a process of its own and then you use a window manager to compose uh, the, the keyboard with, uh, with your, uh, the rest of your application. And so it looks like, uh, well, it's, uh, it's in process, and, but it is not. It's in a separate process. Uh, you... Will, uh, you will need some uh, protocol, uh, inter-process protocol to, uh, to send the key uh, presses to the main application and send some other information to the keyboard. Um, then you have to provide what you do in this process, which would be um, a separate Qt application. Uh, you obviously, uh, you use uh, Qt virtual keyboard on the GPL, and then you have to provide uh, this little uh, wrapper code, which does the communication with the uh, with the main application. You have to provide that under the terms of, of GPL, and so you have to make that public. You have no choice uh, then. 
So you basically, you turn it into a little bit a application code service. you have there. You have to uh, you have to publish because yes. then the combined work of uh, of application and keyboard uh, is on the GPL then. For sure, for sure. Yeah. But it, so I'm, I'm curious. I'm not an expert uh, in, in GPL three. <laughs> Who is, by the way? But uh, the in, in GPL two, there is in section three. You have a couple of alternatives. Yeah, you can distribute in in different ways. So in in only one of them, you have to publish to any third party. It's a vague phrase, I think, but. That any third party is what what if you distribute like I think it's if you're uh, giving an offer mm. to the user, yeah, then you the, have to that's make it public. The, the other uh, option. So you you typically have uh, uh, you have two main options. You can either uh, publish your uh, the source code of uh, the uh, Qt library or piece which is under LGPL or GPL, you can really publish that. That can be on a USB stick, that can be on a, on a web server or whatever. Okay. Uh, that's one way to do it. The other way is you uh, give a written offer and say, uh, dear user, if you really want uh, my crappy software, then you can get it. And you have, uh, uh, and then once the user says, "Hey, I want uh, the software," then you have to provide it in the same way as with the with the first option. And this written offer has uh, has a minimum length of three years, and uh, it must uh, it must hold for uh, the lifetime of the uh, uh, of the product, whatever mm. is longer. Yeah, and I think it's the warranty period or something like yeah. that also comes in. There are there are some terms there. Too. Yep. But but is is there a clause in GPL three? I, I don't yes, remember. Yes, the, there, there is. The, it's explicitly written. Uh, I don't know which clause it is, but uh, there is a clause which r really gives you the these options. Well, it's actually five options. So, mm -hmm. uh, but it's always either you you publish the code. Uh, on a on a CD or USB stick or, or on a web server, and that is already two options: web server yeah. and uh, USB. But stick. I mean, you uh, and, sorry. And then, uh, or you have the written op uh, offer, and then again, yeah. So there are five options in the end, but uh, a bit strange, I would say. <laughs> 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 but I think if if you're my customer, I think that I can. It's enough if I ship the code with a binary. That should be enough. Yes, uh, plus the written offer, and you have to you have to uh, hand the written offer to your customer uh, when uh, they sign the uh, uh, the contract. So the contract uh, which is signed, so uh, there you have to provide the written offer and the text of the GPL or LGPL. You can also put that in the in the manual if you uh, hand over a manual. So that's the the typical way to do that. But it must be it's 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 very explicit. So it's you can't do that uh, the sneaky way behind uh, behind the back. So but you have to hand it over best with the contract. I think this sits under. I, I see part of it under section six here, for instance. I'm I'm looking for yeah. the, uh, the terms with the uh, how long you need to provide stuff as well, but I can't find that up front. Uh, that point. is GPL version three clause six B. Six B. That's the one with the written offer. And the interesting yeah. thing is uh, with uh, version three. Uh, you you have to read GPL uh, the GPL license because LGPL just includes GPL. It's one sentence, and then it adds some more clauses. So it's uh, in with version two. Uh, they were really different. Uh, two different license texts. Yeah, and here it says accompanied by written offer valid for at least three years, as you put, or as long as you offer spare parts or customer support for the product. So that's yep. how they determine the, the lifetime mm -hmm. of it. Exactly. Yeah. 
And there's an, uh, I don't know whether you, you know that already, there is an interesting uh, EU uh, law on the way, uh, which actually uh, forces manufacturers to make their consumer product products updatable. And for, for uh, the typical lifetime of a product, so that means that, uh, so, and the, the idea behind uh, uh, it is that you don't throw away uh, your uh, devices too quickly. So that's for sustainability and uh, being nice to your environment. So uh, that is good that this is the idea behind it, because that means, yeah, you want, they, they are calculating with five years on average, in which they must be able to update the device, say for security updates, that's pretty obvious, but also for, for functional updates. So if the, if the device is not working, uh, then they have to provide an update. And if they don't do, uh, it's uh, getting much easier to uh, give back the device. That, that'll be interesting. I mean, phones yeah. from the 70s usually lasted longer than phones for, were actually used the same with with dry cleaners and washers usually last like 20 30 years the question yeah i wonder if if you could argue that that's the the expected lifetime it, uh, yes so uh, well i i would i would look at uh, the uh, uh write off period in 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 tax law where say uh, i write down my uh a uh, smartphone within three years. Well, I actually, uh, well, as I need it for development, though, I can uh, I can buy them every two years or so. Uh, it's no problem <laughs> to argue. But three years is what tax law says. Or well, with with furniture, it would be five years or so. And I would say with a washing machine, it should be something like ten years. Washing machines normally uh, uh, live for ten years, fifteen years. That's what yeah. I'm used to, at least. So Maybe no, not the smart ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 but basically, no device should stop working because of the software being out. Exactly. So yeah. if you if you remember uh, last year's outrage about Sonos. The loudspeakers, yep. and the thing was, they and uh, they just announced, okay, from now on, uh, certain Sonos speakers. I think the Sonos <laughs> One, um, and I have one here, uh, <laughs> will not work anymore. Or we cannot guarantee that it uh, it will work anymore. And so, with the next uh, with uh, the next software update, you were in danger of losing uh, your loudspeaker. Uh, it's it's outrageous. Uh, well, they uh, they they had to face uh, a big shit a shit storm and eventually pedal back and said, okay, we at least we do not do it uh, um, on purpose. So we try to keep <laughs> at uh, least yeah, <laughs> we keep we keep the speakers running with the old software. So at some point you uh, you shouldn't update anymore, and we tell you when. And they kept uh, they kept that promise so far. So I'm still running the old uh, old speakers. So I've I have two of them, and there the time is already I think seven or eight years. So that's quite long already. But still, I would say a loudspeaker that can last mm -hmm. for fifteen years or twenty years. <laughs> as long as you can plug in uh, an yeah. audio cable to it, yeah. I'm I'm okay with uh, this. Like the. Yeah. Uh, over-the-air transfer not working but, but uh, this... it, it is actually so while well, you have the controller for the speakers you have on your phone and uh, the, the uh, interesting thing with the uh, with the new EU law uh, would, uh, is that the application on your phone uh, counts to the speakers so, uh, so mm -hmm. the product is the loudspeakers and the application on your phone and uh, now it's getting interesting. Mm. And that's that's I think a pretty good a uh, pretty good thing for for consumers. But so but looking at that law from a producer's perspective, is it that the producer need to update it or does it only need to be updatable? 
So you could no, actually No, you must you must provide updates. So uh, So you cannot provide the Yocto build environment and no. say no, we'll you have it. to do it. It's even more than the LGBL requires. And it's for the whole system. It's not just for the LGBL parts. It's for, for every, uh, every package you have on a system, the whole system. So if, if you have some strange uh, video streaming app on your phone and that uh, uh, doesn't work properly, say the, the video quality is always bad, because I don't know, they use some cheap uh, codex or so, and it just doesn't uh, give you a good quality. You can uh, you can uh, give back uh, the phone in the end. <laughs> so now it's getting interesting. Oh. Yeah, that sounds like fun. <laughs> or you can at least get if if that say a subscription service, then you can just terminate the subscription if they can't fix it. Yeah, they have one chance to fix it, and if they can't do it, okay, subscription terminated. Give me my money back. Okay. I remember some, like, some perhaps 10 years ago, there was a discussion about liability. Mm -hmm. So if, if uh, say, say a car, if a car breaks down, uh, causing damages, say it's it's stopping in a tunnel. That that is going to cause a lot of pain for some people. Uh -huh. So if if it does that because of my update, still it's uh, let's use Saab, an old Swedish company not producing cars anymore. I still so, remember them. I'm old enough. <laughs> <laughs> I never had a Saab, by the way. But the the idea was that the car manufacturers were afraid of of letting people update their cars software in the car because it might happen it could be that for example the infotainment system sounds well sounds safe enough but say that you introduce a bug which causes the loudspeaker to go off uh, go on in a spectacularly loud volume causing mm -hmm. you to crash the car or something so it's an interesting case yeah so uh I think by now, uh, with this new law, it becomes a lot easier to get to get your money back. So it's um, yeah, but still, for for the company, it's, it's a huge it's loss. Yeah. Uh, if 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 you update your car with your new QT version, causing a crash, it's still going to be the company. It, if but, if you if you do it, uh, uh, yeah, if uh, with a new law, well. Uh, you have to make sure that the updates work, or you don't provide updates, or you lease uh, you you lease out uh, a device. Well, with a car, it's three years, and then you make sure that uh, these systems work at least for three years, and then you get the car back anyway. So that's that's a model there: leasing things and not just cars. And yeah, it's uh, you had. Uh, that's another aspect of the new law. You now have one year. So the first year, uh, the manufacturer has to prove that you uh, created uh, the problem, uh -huh. uh, the error. So far, it was only six months. And that's a, that's a huge win. So I had, to, for example, I had a NAS uh, breaking down after six months and one week. So guarantee was over. And it was so so obvious that it was uh, uh, it was a bug that must have been in uh, yeah. in, in the software before uh, it uh, it broke on an update actually, which I didn't even start. It was an automatic update and it broke. I didn't. Uh, I went to I took them to court. Didn't help. So uh, I didn't get any any money back. So and now now. It would be easy. I just get my money back. Cool. The uh, I got the impression a couple of years ago that every like uh, every uh, for, after two years, my my phone started to behave misbehave, and then after like a couple of weeks, it started to work again, and then one year further, it started to malfunction. Slightly. Typically one day after your extended guarantee. Uh, yeah, you know, I, or I should like done. buy a new phone, <laughs> extend some uh, special price from a company. So, yeah. 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 And the interest, uh, uh, 
the interesting thing is now what did I want to say with the LGPL? So it's even more than uh, than uh, LGPL demands this uh, the, this law. Sounds good and and yeah, exactly. Now now I I have my train of thought back. Um, it will be difficult now for the cute company to to say, okay, you you should use the uh, you must use cute commercial because you have this update clause in your LGPL version. Why? They are forced by law now in the EU to provide updates for a couple of years anyway. So that's. Uh... <laughs> The, yeah, that, that argument will be a, a lot more difficult uh, <laughs> now, I think. But, but swinging back there a bit to, to, to LGBL, we, we spoke about yeah. the, the TBOization being one of yeah. the biggest hurdles. Ha, yeah. Have you run into any, any patents concerns? It, it, it sounds like some of the devices that you make are potentially involved patents. The, the medical devices typically do. That's that's but uh, ask me in a in a year or so when I'm do done with my current project. <laughs> there, there are certainly some patents involved, and uh, before that, nah, in the software that I write, well, I I, I build the uh, the HMI software. There, are, it's rare that you have patents in there. It's more more in the uh, in the vehicle or in. Uh, say the motor, of course, for example, in, uh, the engine in every uh, every car or tractor. So there, you have a lot of patents. But in the in the HMI software of the infotainment system, uh, well, that's uh, a bit tricky. That's typically it's typically not uh, where patents come in, and, and it moves a bit too quickly to to make the investment to make yeah. a patent. Yeah, and software software patterns, uh, that's what the Americans can do. So <laughs> we, we, we abstain from that. No, and uh, the other thing is uh, um, the 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 company lawyers can uh, know how to uh, how to deal with patterns. So that's uh, another reason why you would uh, never hear any uh, anything about the patent clauses uh, or uh, in in the GPL, or that you are not allowed to sue uh, the uh, developers of of GPL code for for patent infringement, which is good. Come on, you get the software for free. Why why do you want to sue them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And now, if I were Merkel Boom, I would uh, do an ad for the Open Invention Network, where you, uh, we, if you we sign up, every other, <laughs> I, I think so, every yeah, other so. episode it feels like. So, I also learned about what was the name, the Lot uh -huh. uh, Organization. That uh, ah, yeah, that you mentioned is another oh, patent pool to sort of yeah. get fiction by. By moving as a group, uh, and I think if you uh, if you're using uh, force software heavily, you should really uh, sign up there. So I've signed up there as well. So Mirko's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so what I've been over the years doing, like for free and open source software in, in companies, there's always you, you always meet some someone, typically the lawyer. Talking about risk management, what is your impression with your customers? Um, many of my customers do not even have a lawyer, and if uh, they have, they have no clue about uh, software licenses. Mm -hmm. So I'm typically uh, most of the time I'm working with medium-sized uh, businesses, and well, the the sugar uh, the sugar beet harvester manufacturer they they hired external lawyers and certainly not for software or licenses of free open source software uh, that's where they are all out of their depth and even in the uh, well even the say tier one automotive supplier they have loads of lawyers but none who know their way around uh, free open source software that's why they say no we don't do that so when i did 
business development for Nokia queued from when was it 29 to 2012. Uh, I talked to a lot of these uh, big companies and they just didn't have a, uh, the, the legal departments just didn't have a clue about uh, these licenses. And that's why they said, no, uh, you are not allowed. We, we will not use it. So end of discussion. And uh, there you go. The, the, just, the easy way out. You need to ask your lawyer the right question. Otherwise, you get a no. That's the easiest way for them to do their jobs. I guess that, that's the friendly way of saying it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The more diplomatic way of saying that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's more, no, normally just they, they don't know it, and so they say no. Uh, that's, uh, that's some kind of risk management as well. <laughs> cool. But then, then I think we've had a nice discussion. Time, time is flying. Um, and I would like to thank you for your participation. Uh, you thank you very well. Thank you. Insightful. And we will also drop links again to, to your talk in Italy and your newsletter and so on. So, Thank uh, you. Which yeah. we can recommend our readers, listeners to follow. Definitely, definitely. If you're into uh, embedded devices, especially based around Linux, uh, that's the place to go. And always the latest news about uh, the licensing shenanigans of the cute company. <laughs> <laughs>